So I'd like to talk to you about the equation of the tangent plane in, in three states. So let's just go back uh, to the 2D world for a minute and just have a look at something you remember. Um, if you have a, a function like this, say we have written y equals f of x, we know we can get the tangent line at a particular point by first finding uh, the slope of the tangent line and then knowing that it passes through, let's say this is x0, and then over here, the corresponding y value would be f of x0. So what we could say is the tangent line at this point where x equals x0 would be um, y equals f prime of x0 times x minus x0 plus y0. That's like the point slope form of the line. Okay. All right. And uh, what's nice about tangent lines is, and we learned this in, in single variable calculus is that um, when you have a smooth differentiable function then we can say is that if you're near the point of tangency like inside this little green window then that red tangent line does really a pretty good job of approximating the y values of the uh, black y equals f of x function right and sometimes you've heard the term local linearity all right so if you jump up a dimension then uh, things change a little bit. So first off, your things sort of look like maybe some kind of sheet. So this is maybe f of x comma y, and it's returning a z value to you. And what we can say is if we're interested in a particular point here, maybe if we traced it down, we'd find it corresponds to some x0 comma y0 in the xy plane down here. Here's x and there's y and then z heading up like this, okay? So there you are. What we can ask is, uh, what's the equation of the tangent plane to this function f of x comma y when x is equal to zero, x is equal to x zero and y is equal to y zero? So that means around this point somehow there's the tangent plane. Now, I'm not the greatest artist, but um, <clears throat> the analogous is true. Back in, in this world here, the 2D world, we said that the tangent line, that red tangent line, does a pretty good job of approximating the black curved function near the point of tangency. The same thing here is true. Um, what we could say is near the point of tangency, this green point right here, which actually we know the coordinates of, we can say that that has coordinates x0, y0, comma, f of x0, y0 or really sometimes we'll call that z0. What we can say is, is that um, that near that point, the, the tangent plane does a very good job of approximating the surface f of xy. Okay, so what's the equation of that thing look like? Um, it looks kind of similar to, to the thing back in the 2D world. Take a look at this. So z equals the partial derivative with respect to x evaluated at the point x0 and y0 times x minus x0 plus the partial derivative with respect to y evaluated at the point x0 and y0 times y minus y0 and then plus z0. That's it. That's what it looks like. Okay. Notice you have like two slopes. You have a slope in the x direction and a slope in the y direction. Okay. All right. Um, Let's, let's do an example. Let's consider an example. Suppose we had this function, f of x comma y equals x times the square root of y. And we're saying find the tangent plane. Well, actually, we'll say that. Find, I'm going to just call it tp, the tangent plane at the point 1 comma 4, or when x and y are equal to 4, and it's actually the point 1 comma 4 comma f of 1 comma 4. All right. So here we go. So if we think about our tangent line equation up there, we need our partial derivatives, so I guess we'll get those. So f sub x equal, well, if x is the variable in this expression, then the square root of y is just like having a number in front of you. You can think of this as like 5x. So the derivative of 5x is just 5. The derivative of x times the square root of y is just the square root of y. Okay. Um, f sub y, well, now y is the variable. Let's get to think a little bit more carefully. If y is the variable, we can think of this thing as like x times y to the 1 half. 
So x is now acting like a coefficient on the expression y to the 1 half. So the partial derivative here would be x times 1 half y to the negative 1 half. That's how you do the derivative of that y to the 1 half power. We can write that uh, a little nicer, x over 2 rad y. So now we have our two partial derivatives, but uh, we need a little bit more than that. We need to plug in the point we're interested in. So that's what we'll do next. So if we were to take this point, 1, 4, and sub it into both of these expressions, we'll get both partial derivatives. Well, in this case, we just plug in the y value square root of 4 is 2. Over here, we plug in the x and the y. It's going to be 1 over 2 square root of 4, or 1 fourth. So there you go. There you go. It's going to be these pieces of the formula. We already know those pieces. We just need z0. And to get z0, we do f of 1 comma 4, which is 1 times the square root of 4, or just 2. So now we're ready. We can put this all together and get the equation of our tangent plane. So it would be z equals 2 times x minus 1 plus the fourth times uh, y minus 4 plus 2. That's the equation of the tangent plane. Okay? And uh, all the tangent plane problems are the same thing, just maybe the algebra would be a little more tricky or something. Uh, it's important to note you could also go up a dimension. So here, here's sort of a fun problem I came across. And actually, before I, I go ahead to this problem, let me just go back and say one thing about this. Back here on the bottom now, um, you might say, oh, what are some things you can do with this tangent plane? So for example, suppose I said to you, estimate the value of f of 0.9 comma 4.1. You might ask, you say, hey, what do you think that equals? Well, you have an option. You can go and plug that into the function. You could say f of 0.9 comma 4.1 equals 0.9 times the square root of 4.1. Uh, but maybe you don't know the value of those things without using a calculator or something like that. So what you could do if you wanted, and this is practical at some point, is to take, this, take these numbers here and sub them into the tangent plane. You know you can do that because the tangent plane is going to do a really good job at estimating your z value for your function close to the point of tangency. So we could say z equals 2 times 0.9 minus 1 plus 1 fourth times 4.1 minus 4 plus 2. So that's actually not so bad. You're going to have 2 times negative 0.1 plus a fourth times, or we could think of that as like 0.25. 0.25 times 0.1 plus 2. All right, so this is going to be negative 0.2 plus 0.025 plus 2. I guess we'll add that in the order I feel like adding it. So I'm going to say it's going to be 1.8. I'm going to take these two guys together. Plus 0.025 or 1.825. So you get a pretty good estimate for what the value of this expression is. Um, without actually knowing how to do the square root of 4.1 in our mind. OK. All right, so let's, let's go back now. Let's go back up a dimension and then consider this problem. Suppose your job was to estimate the value of this expression. Square root 3.02 squared plus 1.99 squared plus 5.98 squared. OK. So what I want to do is start to think of this like a tangent plane problem. First off, you should notice that we have, in fact, we have three variables here, and we do. So this thing looks like the following function, f of x comma y comma z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. I mean, that's what it looks like. So you should know, you know what, uh, what we're about to find now is uh, we're not going to call it a tangent plane. We really can't call it that, because I don't know what it's going to be. but we can think of this as um, we we'll call it called the linearization. Is what we're going to say. Uh, as a little side note, some of you may have a trouble thinking about well, what's a, what's this function look like? What is a function of three variables? What does that do? Um, how do we describe it? Well, actually, there's there's a good example to help you get thinking about these things. Um, imagine you're in a, a room, right? 
that like looks like this. Okay, and we're looking at it just like a, like that, right? Okay, so this this corner, this is the far corner. We can give that corner coordinates. We can say, hey, this is the point zero zero zero. And then if you imagine moving around the room and you were had a very good say a thermometer that could measure the temperature in its exact location, you could go to different points in the room and measure the temperature. I think it's fair to say you know that if you went to any point in a room that you're in and measured the temperature at that point, you'd get exactly one number. So that means that your temperature at the tip of the thermometer is a function of its location in the room. Every one of these locations has an x0, a y0, and a z0. So this is an example of a function of three variables. And the thing that's being returned to you is temperature. So every point in space in the room has a temperature assigned to it. You can make sense of, of, of three variable functions. Uh, and this is a good example. There's others too. All right. Um, so now what can we do? Well, what I'm saying is if we want to estimate this, we can use the linearization near a particular point. So we're going to find the linearization. That's what I'm calling it now because I can't really call it a tangent plane anymore. Linearization of this function f of x comma y at the point 3 comma 2 comma 6. You might say, well, how did I pick that? Well, I picked it because those are nice integer values that are very close to 3.02 and 1.989 and 5.98 respectively. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, uh, I need a new variable. I'm going to, start to call it w. W is going to be f sub x of x0, y0, z0, comma, x minus x0, plus f sub y of x0, y0, z0, times y minus y0, plus f sub z of x0, y0, z0, comma, z minus c0. So you see I just added this extra piece now here at the end go up a dimension in my linearization. All right, so we're going to have to do some partial derivatives. Now, luckily, there's some nice symmetry here. Here's what I mean. Uh, we take the first partial, the partial derivative with respect to x. We see something pretty nice happening. Well, think of this thing for the time being as x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the 1 half power. So the derivative of that is going to be 1 half x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the negative 1 half times 2x. That's a chain rule. Okay? So we can write that. You can see, first off, actually, you can see that 2 and that 2 cancel. So you get just x over the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Okay? And then, because the symmetry, everything else looks the same, you're going to end up, this one's just going to be y over x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Now we would have taken the derivative with respect to y. And then the last case would have been z. If you don't believe me, pause the video, try it, and you'll see that works out. OK, great. So we're there. We just need to finally finish off by evaluating all these things. All these things need to be evaluated when x is equal to 3, y is equal to 2, and z is equal to 6. All right? Notice they're all the same denominator. I'm going to go find that real quick. Well, that denominator is the square root of 3 squared plus 4, uh, plus 2 squared, sorry, plus 6 squared. It turns out to be uh, 9 plus 4 plus 36. Uh, that's going to be 13 plus 36 plus 49. Well, surprise, surprise, you get just 7. That's sort of nice. All right, so what do these things turn out to be? Well, f sub x is x over 7, or it's going to be 3, 7. f sub y will be 2, 7. And f sub z will be 6, 7. I mean, it's sort of nice that they all have the same denominator. So I knew that all have a 7 in the denominator. And the numerator is just the x value, or just the y value, or just the z value. So that's how we got these nice numbers. All right? So finally, we're ready to write our, our, our tangent line. There's one more thing we need, our tangent, or well, not our tangent, we'll just say our linearization. Uh, one more thing, actually, I should say. We need that last piece. For example, in, in our linearization here, um, there's one more piece here. We need to say plus f of x0, 
y0, z0. And the reason we need that is just like back in the other case. Remember uh, when we did our tangent plane, notice the last base was, what, last piece was plus z0, or really that was f of x0, y0. When we go back to even another dimension, right, that last thing, this y0 here is really f of x0. That's what that is. It's this y value that we've got. <coughs> okay, so uh, let's go get that. f of 3, 2, 6 means square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 6 squared. We already found that. We know that's 7. All right, so here we go. w equals 3 sevenths x minus 3 plus 2 sevenths y minus 2 plus 6 sevenths z minus 6 plus 7. There you go. Now you have your linearization. And since you have your linearization, you could now find an estimate for these things. Remember, we, we cared about the point. Let's go back and look. We cared about when x is 3.02, y is 1.99, and z is 5.98. This is going to be 3 sevenths times 3.02 minus 3 plus 2 sevenths times 1.99 minus 2 plus 6 sevenths times 5.98 minus 6 plus 7. <coughs> and that's it. So now we, we, we know approximately what our expression is going to be. I'm going to do a little bit of work here. This is going to be 3 sevenths times 0.02 plus 2 sevenths times negative 0.01 plus 6 sevenths times negative 0.02 plus 7. All right. So we got 0 0.06 over 7 plus negative 0 0.02 over 7 plus negative 0.12 over 7 plus, uh, I guess we'll say 49 over 7. Okay. So that's what this stuff is. So what do we get here? I'd like to get negative 0.08 over 7 plus 49 over 7, right? And that's going to be equal to negative, oh, not negative, sorry, 48.92 over 7. You should expect this thing to be a little bit less than 7, a small, a small amount less than 7, okay? You get a pretty good sense that it's greater than or less than just by doing a little bit of work. Okay, and that's called a local linearization, and you can see how it, you can move up through dimensions with that and uh, answer all kinds of questions. Thanks for watching.